and everybody in Isle of Nation is singing the Josh Bailey song because he won this in double overtime. 3-2, the final score as the Islanders take a 3-2 lead on this first round series with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Hello, everyone. Welcome inside our MSG Network studios here in Midtown Manhattan. And you're welcome. I'm glad that I didn't sing the Josh Bailey song either because you probably would have turned off the show. And we have so much to get to that you're going to want to stick around. We're going to hear from Butch, Brendan, AJ. We're also going to take a look at this exciting game. And you're going to hear from the players and Barry Trotz. This game was not one that the Islanders were thriving in the first couple of periods, but they found a way to win and they found a way to do it together. That's exactly what this Islanders team is all about. And that's why they have a lead 3-2 in this series and an opportunity to finish the series on home ice at Nassau Coliseum, which is going to be on Wednesday night. AJ Malesko has been with us all night long. AJ, how much fun was the ending of this one? It was Josh Bailey playing hero in double overtime. I mean, how exciting was that? We talked about how the first overtime was such a good effort. So it was open. It was such a change from what we saw in the first three periods of regulation. And then it took less than a minute for them to come out and take advantage of a gaffe by Tristan Jari, who had a fantastic game. So it's a tough for, tough break for him. But Barry Trotz has always said that you create your own puck luck, right? And he believes in the hockey gods. So they did something right, and the hockey gods smiled on them, and Josh Bailey was given an opportunity. It looked almost like it was an empty net, but he actually, it was more challenging than it looked like. Jari got himself back in position and Penguins came all around Josh Bailey. So it was good for him to bury it. Created with a forecheck by Anthony Bavillier. So all around good effort. And, uh, you know, they didn't have to drag it out into the wee hours of the night. So that's good for all of us too. I think it's late for some of the kids. And if they've got school tomorrow, <laughs> their parents might be saying, okay, it's time to go to bed. Mom, dad, let them stay up for a little bit longer because we have an hour long post game show to go through all of this. AJ, stick around. I just want to catch people up in case for some reason you had a rush to do something else earlier today and you're wondering how this game unfolded. Let's take a look at the highlights and how the Islanders were able to come away with this miraculous double overtime win. In the first period, it's Josh Bailey taking a penalty there, and that gives the Pittsburgh Penguins a power play opportunity. You never want to give them a chance to do that, and Evgeny Malkin can be just as dangerous as anybody else on their team. He scores to give the Islanders, or to give the Penguins a one-goal lead, but Anthony Beauvillier is looking to respond. Less than a minute to play, weaving, diving. He finds the top shelf there and is able to tie this game up as the Islanders are heading into the first intermission. In the second period, Islanders were looking to have a little more jump early on, but ultimately the Penguins controlled the pace here and Brian Russ scored his second goal of the postseason with some help from Crosby and Latang. We go to the third period, Islanders a little more jump and ultimately it was Jordan Everly who was able to keep his point streak alive. Three straight games for him, his second goal of the postseason and then to double overtime we go plenty of chances in the first overtime but none yet either team were able to capitalize on a mistake there by Jari and Josh Bailey puts it to the back of the net and he is filled with hugs and high fives with his teammates the elation there in Pittsburgh as the Islanders steal this one 3-2 the final score over the Penguins on their turf at PPG Paints Arena. A look at the final scoring summary shows the final score, three to two, had lots of shot attempts for both teams, but really the Penguins out attempting them 50 to 26. And uh, you see uh, the shot attempts were just really off the charts there. Okay, we wanna go back out to Pittsburgh now. Dan Potash having an opportunity to catch up with number 12, Josh Bailey. Well, Josh, I think it's fair to say that you guys made the most of some Penguin miscues tonight. Uh, your goals coming on mistakes made by the Penguins, but that last opportunity, uh, what did you see? Were you actually able to read the play or, or read Tristan Jari's eyes as he was trying to get rid of the puck? Well, I mean, you're, you know, we're just trying to put pressure on him. I think Bo did a good job getting up the ice. Um, tried to fan out a little and just, you know, kind of guess that he might go middle and um, it, just, it just happened to work out. What was the mindset in the, uh, or discussion in the room after the second period when the the Penguins really were firing on all cylinders. I think they outshot you 20 to four in that second frame. How did you guys keep your composure and stay in the game? Well, we knew we were hanging around. Soroka was giving us a chance. Um, you know, it was just, uh, we knew we weren't playing up to our caliber. They were playing well. 
Um, but we knew we had a chance, so it was just come out, let's try and tie this thing up and see what happens. And, um, and over time again, I mean, Soroka stood on his head, so it's, uh, we had some looks, um, you know, ultimately got the win. So it's, uh, it's a big one for us. We'll enjoy it here for a little bit, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll refocus, start getting ready for the next one. Now, I know your confidence is riding high with three goals, I think, in your last four games. But as a whole, uh, we talk about a series being tied at two after four games. The winner of game five uh, takes a huge amount of momentum. Uh, how do you guys embrace that and hold on to it for the next day and a half before you can take the ice again? Yeah, I think it's, you know, staying confident. But, ag again, I think win or lose, you uh, you have to refocus. So it's going to be uh, – it'll be a big one at home, and we're going to want to – uh, put our best foot forward and, and try and find a way to close it. Hey, Josh, thanks so much for the time. Thank you. And thanks to Dan, Dan Potash for the interviews from Pittsburgh tonight. An exciting ending for the New York Islanders tonight. The game-winning goal in double overtime and assists almost 24 minutes of ice time. And this series, as you heard him talk about it there, three goals and an assist. His second career playoff overtime goal. And guess what? Both of those were against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So Josh Bailey having some of that magic there tonight. And AJ, I thought it was pretty interesting. We saw what his face looked like when he scored the goal and celebrating with his teammates. But just a couple minutes later, when you're there doing that press interview, it's back to this. It's back to that calm demeanor and not getting too high or too low, which was a big part of this Islanders team and how they like to approach the playoffs. Well, and Josh even verbalized it right there. He said that we're going to enjoy this for a few minutes, but then we've got to refocus and get ready for the big game on Wednesday back at the Coliseum where they have a chance to clinch this first round and move on and knock uh, Pittsburgh out. So that's a big opportunity for the Islanders. And they know they didn't play their best. So the fact that they were able to, they figured out a way to win, albeit in double overtime, they pulled the win out and they were not at their best. And you heard Josh talk about that second period when they were outshot 20 to four. He said, we knew we needed to get more out of us, out of all the team. And they also knew how much they were relying on Ilya Sorokin. So that's one thing that they they are aware of their shortcomings and they need to move forward. And, and they did throughout the game. They built on it and they had a great first overtime and they were able to secure the victory.